today I want to give you my first impressions on the new Dutch cruisers. I've been playing the Harlem and it's been interesting. You'll know, at least if you've been watching the videos for a little while, that when this gimmick of an airstrike was released, or at least teased as an idea, I thought it was good. It was gonna be horrible. I thought it would be game breaking, and I figured it would just lead to more passive, campy meta games. And since then, it's been developed and nerfed and changed, and the airstrikes don't do a lot of damage. The theme of this video is going to be that the ship doesn't do a lot of damage, <laughs> but it's still bad for the game, okay? I still think these ships should not exist and they are game breaking, even though their damage output is pretty pitiful. I think the armor has also been a little overhyped. It's not bad armor, especially at the lower tiers. This Harlem feels quite tanky for a cruiser, mainly because it gets a heal and most of your counterparts don't actually get a heal. That's something that I've really enjoyed about playing the Harlem is playing a tier eight cruiser is so nice when you have a heal. It just feels so much better. Your armor's not bad as well, but it's not this ultra tanky ship that is impossible to take down. You do take damage, but less than say a light cruiser like a Cleveland might against a battleship or against HE. You're able to shatter some, you're able to bounce some. But what you're seeing here is the airstrikes and why I think that they're game breaking, even though they don't do too much damage, at least right now. The bombs on the Harlem only pen 34 millimeters. As you go up in the tiers, I believe the tier 10 pens 40 millimeters or 38. 38 is the important threshold that it crosses. And that is most American battleships deck armor. So they're gonna be full penning all the time. You see, we just shattered two on that Shikishima. Keep in mind, this is against tier 10s right now. And these airstrikes, I've been calling them free damage. And that's because I can hide behind this island, near the middle of everything, not get spotted because of my insane concealment, and just every a minute 30 seconds, drop these airstrikes on people. And sometimes, they actually do pretty good damage. And I think on this bomber, and we're gonna see, we just got 10k damage and a double fire. So that forces his damage control. And look what we have coming up next, is another airstrike in six seconds. <laughs> this is the tier eight. And I know not every strike is gonna look like that. Sometimes you're just gonna do nothing. Sometimes you're gonna get three to 5k damage and it's gonna look pretty pitiful, especially in the context of this ship having some of the worst like am offensive firepower at the tier. These guns are horrible, but we used his damage control. We got another 5k and a permanent fire. This is free damage that what is the ship gonna do that you're striking? Oftentimes they're caught in a turn, they're caught bowing on an island. It's really easy to use this airstrike. I don't think this airstrike is very difficult to use at all. It's around a 14 second lead time. And even on ships going full speed, it's just a 14, 15 second lead time. That's less than what it is to lead Montana shells at 28-ish kilometers. and. If we'll remember, actually, on this map, I hit a shot at 28 kilometers with my Montana in a Kings of the Sea. It's something that I personally have practiced over time, so I find it not too difficult, but I'm assuming that if you're not used to leading things, at least at that much lead time, you're not gonna be used to it, but it's something you can learn. You'll generally learn how far a ship can move in that 15 second window. And you can lead ships going full speed. It's pretty easy to predict what people are gonna do as well. If you're noticing that somebody is dodging your shells reasonably, reasonably well, they're probably gonna try and dodge the airstrike, which usually looks like a slow down and turn in or a slow down and turn out. Sometimes it'll be a battleship with a rudder shift that is longer than it takes for your airstrike to get there, right? A lot of higher tier battleships have more than 15 seconds rudder shift. So they're kind of stuck in whatever turn they're gonna be doing, like this Shikishima who decides to turn in. There's not a lot of things he can do to avoid this airstrike. I think against smaller ships, yes. They can definitely avoid these airstrikes, and that's probably a good thing. As we're gonna see later on, you can use these airstrikes as cap resets against DDs, and you can just kind of blindly look for them in the cap and sometimes hit them. And of course, it is something that 
isn't going to do a lot of damage to a Shikishima. You shouldn't be expecting to do damage to ships that have decent deck armor, right? But if we find ourselves against a Thunderer, well, any British battleship, any French battleship, we're going to be doing quite a lot of damage. And once we get into the higher tiers, we're going to do a lot of damage to American battleships as well. Once we get above that 38 millimeters of pen. The bombs do have a pretty big spread on them, so you're not going to do a lot of damage to lighter cruisers or smaller ships. And uh, I think this is just showing you how bad these guns are. They don't have a lot of alpha, they have poor dispersion, and they have a really, really long reload. Don't have a lot of range either, so it's rough out here with these guns. They're not very good at all. Their HE fire chance doesn't even seem to be that amazing. And of course, now that we're on fire, we should talk about 60 second fires on a cruiser. So you do get a little better armor than your counterparts, at least with the Harlem as we go higher up in tiers. Your other cruisers at tier nine and 10 start to get better armor as well, but don't suffer from these 60 second fires. At least at the tier eight, you do have the heals to make up for that. As we go into the higher tiers, I'm sure the heals on the You'd rather just have a normal heal on a normal cruiser and only take 30 second fires or... Actually, I forget what a normal cruiser gets. Is it 45 or 30? I'm pretty sure it's 30 second fires on a normal cruiser. So it is rough. And unlike a battleship, you don't have fire prevention. So there's the first game I wanted to show you the interesting bits. Only 88k damage, but remember, this is a tier eight cruiser and we're not expecting hundreds of thousands of damage every game. We did get 50 target hits though. And a lot of those shattered because we were pretty much constantly dropping bombs on that Shikishima most of the game. And we ended up with 35k damage and another 34k from our main guns. 18k from fires, not too bad, but not amazing either. It seems like this gimmick isn't that amazing. But I think it's game breaking. I think it's something that ruins the game. Because you're allowed to do it over islands. You can do it from any position you're in. So my strategy with these ships has been find a really safe island as close to the enemy as possible. You saw in that previous example, we were very far up, but we were pretty safe. This concealment allows you to play some of these islands and get into these positions relatively easily. And once you're here, every minute, 30 seconds, you can be dropping these airstrikes. Remember, of course, some of the planes will get shot down as you're sending them out, so your airstrike will drop in its amount of firepower if you send it into a clump of AA. So it's not like you're hitting, getting all of the bombs out of it, right? And that's maybe sometimes why they miss, sometimes why you're getting less damage. But a great example of how not to play against <laughs> these airstrikes is this Moskva sitting bow in on a corner of an island. It's another example of why you shouldn't be playing like this against carriers as well. It makes you a sitting duck and a very easy target to hit. But since we're starting the carrier comparison, I agree completely with you. These are nowhere near as broken as carriers. But if we're starting to compare these against carriers, doesn't that say that they're not good for the game already? If we're even remotely in the same universe as comparing them against carriers and their planes, doesn't that mean that it's already pretty harmful for the game? I think that these strikes are going to make the game more passive. I think that if you run into a Dutch cruiser, you're going to be less likely to push. I think that you won't push up to an island. You won't get that forward position with your radar cruiser to help your destroyers win the capture circle. I think that once that happens and your radar cruisers don't push up, your battleships aren't going to push up because they're afraid suddenly of all the torpedo threats of the DDs that they don't know if they're being pushed back or not. We again get a nice chunk of damage on the Moskva and another fire. This game, we actually end up getting almost no damage out of our fires. <laughs> we'll show you with that at the end. I got really unlucky with the fire damage here, but I want you to notice that we haven't shot the Moskva once yet. Take a look at the damage at the end when uh, we see that. I never shoot this Moskva with my main guns. I only ever hit him with airstrikes. And we do pretty good damage by the end. It's, I think, game breaking. I'm trying to make the argument that doing damage, not from your main guns, not from torpedoes that are 
not homing. We'll talk about subs later once those are starting to get released. But torpedoes that home in on your target are kind of broken, that ignore uh, ignore your <laughs> torpedo protection to do citadel damage that you can't heal. That's pretty broken too. But I think planes are just really bad for the game. Yes, these don't spot. Yes, you do have a limited range in 12 kilometers. But this Moskva would be safe from every other cruiser, except a Harlem. What's something like an Otago gonna do to this Moskva, right? He's not gonna be able to drop this airstrike over and over and over again and constantly be lighting these fires using his damage control. Look at that, another six and a half, seven and a half thousand damage and a double fire. His damage control is constantly up. That is kind of the downside, I suppose, of constantly sending out my airstrike when it's available. Maybe I should consider saving up two and then sending them both out. I'm not quite sure on the complete strategy yet, but this is something that I've really been frustrated with while playing this ship. The damage output feels lackluster, and yet the damage I am doing feels unfair to fight against. Do you think that Moskva's enjoying himself getting constantly airstruck like that? Do you think he thinks that's fair? Maybe you think that that's fine and there's nothing wrong with that, but I'd remind you that this game is a ship game. It's not an airplane game. It says World of Warships on the box, right? And plane damage, being able to do that much when you're considered safe or a good position for a radar cruiser, I think it's a little ridiculous actually. And yeah, 11, fi 11 fires, 12,000 damage per fire. Notice how much damage we did with our main battery. 23,000 damage. And our airstrike did 37,000 that game. And we did 34K, 35K without ever shooting that Moskva once. I think that's just bad for the game. I really do. Yes, the damage output is sometimes pitiful, especially when you're you know, trying to airstrike something like a Minnesota where he's gonna shatter your bombs everywhere but his superstructure and the tiny bit of his nose or stern, right? We're not gonna get much damage out of it. But you do have a respectable 30-ish percent fire chance on the bombs. And I just don't think that that's a good way to deal damage. Even if these did no damage, which they don't, I just don't think that this is good for the game. I originally started playing this game as a ship versus ship combat game. And it seems like as we're progressing through the lifespan of this game, less of the damage we're taking is from ships shooting their guns or sending torps at us. You know, assu assuming they're not homing torpedoes. I'm totally fine with the way torpedoes work because they take skill to lead and predict what somebody's gonna do several minutes before they actually end up doing it, right? It's fine that those do so much damage. But this is a 15 second lead time, can go over islands, no problem, and can just constantly be a pressure, lighting fires, forcing damage controls. And it's not something you can angle to. It is something you can sometimes avoid, but again, I don't think it's that easy to avoid these either. Now, the position I'm in right here is pretty bad. I'm slowly entering into a crossfire between two Montanas two higher tier battleships than me. So it's time to get out of here. And of course, because of our excellent concealment, we are capable of doing just that. This ship is capable of bouncing Montana shells, assuming it hits the deck armor or the upper belt armor, but uh, the bow and stern are 25. So we do have to keep that in mind. Going straight bow in is a pretty bad idea in this ship. And that's why you're gonna see me tend to play at a bit of an angle, trying to bait these guys into shooting my broadside armor and then angling it so that it bounces. I think there's just too much of this ability for cruisers to bounce all this, all these guns. Um, yes, it is frustrating to see all of the power creep in all, all this 30 millimeters of overmatch, but when this game first came out, there was no cruisers other than Zhao with a 30 millimeter belt armor or upper belt armor. Every cruiser was susceptible to overmatch from this Montana. And yes, we do take some damage, but a lot of it's gonna be bouncing or just bouncing off of the deck into our superstructure for an overpen, that kind of thing. But I don't want to make it sound like I think the armor is really, really amazing on this ship. 
I just think in general, the game used to punish cruisers a lot harder when they did end up fa facing a battleship in open water, especially one two tiers higher, where you were scared of the guns hitting you. At this point, I'm not scared of these guns at all, mainly because it's really easy to dodge them at these ranges. And two, if he does manage to hit me, he's not gonna be doing those massive salvos at these ranges. At close range, sure, he can isolate my uh, bow, that kind of thing, but 4,000 damage, that's nothing, especially when we have something called a heal on a cruiser at tier eight. And this heal is special. You get the Massachusetts or premium American secondary battleship heal where it its cooldown is 40 seconds. And that can be a good thing and a bad thing where you end up just blowing through your heals in the first 10 minutes of the game and then you don't have any left. But it's a really nice thing to have when your ship doesn't really do a lot of damage. We hit eight shells there and actually didn't even do 5,000 damage to that Montana. But we did pop his damage control and we have two airstrikes available. So what if we just charge at him and see what happens? I think that might be a good time. I don't think these ships are good. I really don't. So far, the Harlem has been kind of underwhelming and boring to play. But I think that what they bring to the game is negative. I think they're taking away from the experience of a World of Warships player. If you're playing your Baltimore and you're facing a Harlem and you're both on either side of a known radar island, this guy can just send airstrike after airstrike after airstrike at you. And what are you gonna do about it? Well, you're either gonna sit there and take it and end up dying eventually, or you run to the back of the map and hide. You don't push in because you don't wanna get yourself stuck on an island. And that's the problem with carriers too. They promote passive gameplay. I think that is the biggest issue here. I see a lot of people complain about the way things are so passive these days. And the reason it's so passive is things like this being added to the game. Carriers, submarines with homing torpedoes, and these airstrikes. Things that can do damage from a position of relative safety. Obviously, I'm not too safe here, but you saw in those earlier clips just sitting on an island near the cap zones. There we go, we finally get some good hits in. We did shatter a lot of those bombs, because again, Monty does shatter a lot of those lower tier airstrike bombs. We would hit them much harder if we had had the tier 10, for example. But we still, I think, did around 10 to 15,000 damage raw there and lit another three fires. <laughs> it's just a horrible way to do damage, in my opinion. The ship itself is never gonna look overpowered if it's if they stay in this state. They're not good at dealing damage with their guns and the airstrikes are kind of hit and miss. But I think putting them in the game is just a net negative. It doesn't help the game become any more interesting. It just makes the game more boring and promotes sitting in the back, sniping, camping, staying in spawn, using range mod, and never pushing in. Because if you push in and you rely on an island to save you, quote unquote, from da damage being dealt to you, I've talked a lot about that in the way that I brawl in battleships. I tend to use islands a lot of the time as these checkpoints or safety points, but you can't do that when these are around. You can't do that when carriers are around. And I think that's just a bad thing for the game. Here's what I was talking about earlier where this Kagero goes dark and he's still in the cap, so. Why don't we send some bombers out to see if he's still there? And uh, he's likely to leave before those bombers get there, but we end up doing two pens worth of damage and force him out of the cap so he can't get this cap. It's an interesting way to use the airstrike, and I'm sure that as time progresses, we're gonna get more and more creative ways of using these airstrikes to get information, deal damage, or prevent the enemy team from advancing. And now I want to show you an example of the armor being surprisingly good for a cruiser. Remember, this is a cruiser. It's not a battleship. It's not a battle cruiser. It's just a cruiser. And uh, a lot of the tier eight cruisers would not have survived as long as I did here. But one of the strengths, quote unquote, of this line is the anti-aircraft. And you're going to see how horrible it is right here. This is one of the new... Um, well, overpowered Russian carriers that they're adding into the game with amazing alpha strikes that don't have constant drops. You can't just drop multiple times with the same squad, but 
they get big, big alpha strikes. And I'm going to lose quite a bit of health to this guy. <laughs> and have already, you can see, I've already had seven planes shot down. It's frustrating. I won't lie. Being in this position where it feels helpless because the game is essentially decided. You can see that from the team scores here. But blowouts are frustrating. Damage coming from the air that you ha can't really avoid is frustrating. And I think it's just bad for the game. I think you all know my opinion on carriers and how overpowered I think they are and how bad they are for the game. I just think airstrikes are a miniature version of that. They're nowhere near as imbalanced as the aircraft carriers are, but I think airstrikes themselves are just another small step on the road to an incredibly passive, boring game that really isn't fun for anybody to play. Something I really should mention about these ships as well is that the AP performance seems to be pretty bad. You may have noticed that the gun turrets look a little bit like those on the Hindenburg or the Rune, but they very much are not. <laughs> the Alpha is very different, and it seems like they have worse pen angles than most AP does. You can see that Cleveland is giving me enough broadside to get all of his guns off. Usually that's a sign that he can be citadeled, or at least you can get good pen damage on him. He's too, he's not angled enough to actually bounce our shells. But we got two bounces there in that earlier shot, and the dispersion is so horrendous that oftentimes you're just gonna miss everything at once. So, yeah, I think my first impressions for these ships are they're boring, they're not very interesting, they don't bring a good ship or an overpowered ship to the game, but they do bring a game-breaking mechanic, and that is these airstrikes. It's pretty easy to manipulate people and uh, hit even some of the lighter armored ships, like a Cleveland that's pretty maneuverable. I'm assuming he thought that I was going to go behind him, and I went in front as... I kind of expected him to accelerate. And those five hits did around 6,000 damage there to that guy that he can't heal back because he doesn't have a heal. I'm not super thrilled about these ships, if you couldn't tell. Um, looking at the team score here, we can see that the enemy CV did, what, 52 planes worth of... Uh, he lost 52 planes and he still had full squads coming out at me. It's kind of ridiculous how uh, fast they replenish their planes. But hey... Aircraft carriers do not belong in this game, and I think in general, aircraft don't belong in this game. But here's my stats. I wanted to look at this just quickly before we go. This ship is doing around 75,000 average damage over the five games or so that I had played. And let's compare that to something like the Otago, where I've played that ship a ton. Since near the beginning of the game, when I first got in, I think Otago was my first premium ship. And... Honestly, the difference isn't that huge. It's only a couple thousand damage output, and I'm sure the win rate will stabilize on the uh, Harlem in time, but it seems like a reasonably well-balanced, if a little bit underwhelming, tier 8 cruiser so far with the Harlem. We'll see what I think as we climb the tiers, but my initial impressions is they're boring, they don't do very well with their main guns. Their armor isn't much to write home about. And airstrikes, while they don't do a ton of damage, are just not a good addition to the game. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.